Hello guys, it's time. I wanna go over the buyer representation and broker uh, agreement because we are approaching July 1st very, very fast. Um, today is April the 4th and I just wanna make sure everyone's prepared. So I'm going to do a quick, quick video. I'm gonna try and keep it as quick as possible. Um, kind of explaining what's going on in the real estate world, okay? If you don't know, my name is Juwan Rohan. I'm a realtor with Twin Oaks Real Estate. I help first time home buyers, investors, whatever it is you need. I hope um, so I'm just gonna go over kind of the changes so if you've heard about the NAR settlement you can literally google it it's everywhere um, there was a settlement between NAR and sellers um, and NAR is going to be <laughs> giving a hefty payout to um, sellers uh, for representation agreements and I'll show you kind of how it traditionally worked and then we'll get into this um, this paper right here which is about three pages I want you to understand it because um, I want to interview as a position for um, becoming your realtor and so I'm going to be sending uh, you this form to fill out look it over discuss with your partner and ask me any questions or concerns about it uh, so let me explain kind of how it was previously um, well how it still is today um, so today realtors like myself can go to what's called the MLS right and it can show coming soon homes it can show um, uh, homes that are on Zillow right now or withdrawn anything right and we can see what the sellers are offering the buyers broker my broker um, my office um, what they're offering for compensation to bring a buyer so sellers traditionally would offer you know 2.5 percent sometimes two it all depends on the deal if it's a small condo it could be one percent it really depends on the deal but uh, traditionally it's 2.5 percent um, so the seller would offer my my office 2.5 of the purchase price if I bring a buyer to them and how I see that is these right here this right here so it's 2.5 2.5 okay it goes all the way down I think there was a three in here okay you got 2.375 you got three right here okay so I would be able to see this and you know I can show you a home I can show you multiple homes I can never have you sign anything okay and you can uh, have me show you 20 homes and then disappear and then we never speak again right like that's how it would work um, things are changing <laughs> um, now the sellers and the agents are going to be able to they're not going to be able to put this in the MLS starting July 1st this will not be anywhere so as an agent what I have to do is I have to call up every agent and say hey do you have um, is the seller paying any compensation okay if they're not guess who's liable for that right now you're probably wondering well I don't have extra money like buying a home is already unaffordable and I'm on your side 100% I think this law is stupid I think uh, <laughs> it's it's very unfortunate for first-time home buyers um, so I'm on your side trust me but there's going to be some, you know, kind of stalemate in the industry where it's going to be kind of a lot of agents trying to figure things out. And I'm trying to get ahead of it. That's why I'm sending these forms out in April and all transparency, you know, um, give you time to, to start thinking, to start preparing, um, because it is going to become a little bit more unaffordable. If you're unable to pay my fee, then I'm going to have to negotiate it with the seller. Right. Um, which I can do. I've done it before, plenty of times. So it's not an issue. But. It's just going to be more of a process, okay? Um, and so if they don't have, you know, uh, if they're not offering this this service, then you're going to have to uh, pay for it, right, through escrow. <clears throat> and it's very unfortunate, but you, you might just be thinking, well, I don't need a realtor. Oh yeah, maybe you're, maybe you're right, you know, maybe you wanna go to an attorney. Attorneys charge about 300 bucks per hour, so, essentially you might end up paying them more to draft up paperwork right um <laughs> and what if you're paying a, a business attorney right and they had they don't know anything about real estate they don't know the thing about showing a home what to look for in a home they're a realist they're their attorney right so um it, it's gonna get very tricky and and I, like i said i want to keep this video short so i can keep going on more about that but so 
if this is not they they will not legally be able to put this on the mls so we will not know okay so i'll have to call up every agent you want to tour and just ask and so that leads me to this buyer representation and broker agreement this is an agreement between you you and me and um, essentially we are agreeing that if there's nothing in here that the seller is going to pay you will be responsible for my time and my um my resources my knowledge everything okay and you're probably wondering well i don't want to just be stuck with you what if i don't decide to buy it? that's totally fine that's totally fine we can in the agreement there's a expiration so i'm gonna go ahead and just go quickly over this agreement um and if you have any questions or concern please reach out to me directly so right here is going to be buyer's name your name you know my broker um because essentially you're paying the broker you're not paying me which a lot of people get confused right you pay the broker and then i get a percentage from that so when people say realtors get paid too much i would love to break that down for you um then it's going to start there's going to be a start date and there has to be an end date okay so it could be 90 days later it can be 180 365 days right a year it has to be an end date okay um and then you're agreeing that you have no pre-existing buyer representation agreements you didn't sign with another realtor now i know you're, you're you're wondering like well what if i work with a bunch of realtors my family's a realtor but you bring me deals right etc you can have other agreements you just have to say it here okay in this line totally fine um now it can be property specific okay um or i guess this would be property specific right here so if it's like hey I only want you to represent me and I will only pay you if it's on 123 Main Street. That's it, okay? Um, or it can be location-wise, it can be cities, it can be counties. I'll pay you for anything you find me in Solano, Contra Costa, and Alameda, bingo, okay? Or if you're thinking about Nevada, you can sign a different one with someone in Nevada, right? Um, so um, it's very property, it can, it can be either, either or. Um, the properties identified on the attached list we can attach a list and, and have a bunch of properties um that, that you know you can pay me for or the broker so compensation goes to the broker okay now this was the misconception and this is why nara settling is sellers thought for whatever reason that this was not negotiable that the percentage 2.5 2.5 was not negotiable um, it's always been negotiable. Now, I guess the way agents pick, pitched it, maybe, you know, I don't know, um, but this is negotiable, okay? It's not fixed by law. They are set by each broker individually and made to be negotiable between you and me, okay? So <clears throat> we can agree on something. Uh, buyers agree to pay the broker as followed, okay? Whether it's a percent of the acquisition price, 2.5% of the acquisition price, 2% of the acquisition price, or just a flat rate, right? So you can have that um, right here in this, I can't highlight it, but number two, okay? Um, and then kind of, it breaks down how you can enter an agreement. There can be a broker right to compensation, okay? Which would be a broker involvement, non in, non exclusive representation so compensation is is payable only if there was broker involvement if i went and showed you the property if i sent you disclosures i get paid now if i didn't do any of that and you went you went to open house you didn't do anything right you're still gonna have to find someone to represent you so you go find joe smith right and you have them represent you but they're gonna make you sign the agreement anyways because that's the law any realtors going forward in july 1st cannot show houses without having this signed you cannot legally enter a open house without having one of these signs so no peeking neighbors no none of that that's why it's so important and you don't have to pick your realtor today right like like i said i don't waste a realtor's time right because of time and money driving to these appointments but um things are changing so it can be a non-exclusive representation but even if you go to an open house starting july 1st you're gonna have to sign with someone so you might end up signing with a random person there and typically in california they're not going to do dual agency because there's a lot of liability between there so um uh then you can have buyer acquisition acquisition <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying exclusive representation which means you you know we sign this you go i can let you go talk to whoever you want to and you you tour homes on your own um i can show you homes whatever happens uh, i'm entitled to um 
compensation. This is ideally what we'd want, right? If you're uncomfortable with this, then um, I totally understand and we can we can talk and maybe do non-exclusive and then transfer into exclusive. Um, remember, I'm not trying to tie you down. Like if you end up not buying a house, I'm not gonna hold you to it. Like, you know what I mean? Like this is, this, they're just forcing us to, make, to do this. So um, we have cancellation of buyer representation agreement. Obviously if you wanna cancel, we both just do it in writing and you know, you're off, you're off to the races. I, I, to me, having a realtor that just like is like keeping you down, it's a little kind of red flaggish. Um, so um, kind of the accounting, this is, I like this one. If anyone other than the buyer compensates broker for services covered by this agreement, the amount shall be credited towards buyer's obligation to pay compensation. So if you're like, hey, Juwan, I'll pay you if you find us this dream home, but look, I really, really want you to negotiate with the seller's agent to have them pay for it. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that, I got you, right? So I'm gonna go and negotiate it, and if they pay, guess what? You're kinda off the hook, right? <laughs> so um, like if, if we agree to 2.5% and they pay 2.5%, then there we go, problem solved right so um that's why i really like this and these forms will probably change in the next few months so we probably have to sign something again um after they incorporate it i know they're working on it right now but it's going to take a few months for legal to kind of go through the words and everything um so yeah that's pretty much that now i know what you're thinking you're probably like well i can sign this form get it over i can have him show me fifty thousand homes and then boom i find the home i want and then i put it in writing that i want to cancel this and then i go purchase that home right yeah it's not that easy okay um so there's a little clause right here that says additional broker right to compensation it means like if you find the home and then we cancel this agreement i can put in here there's such and such well we can put in there's such and such days so where if you per, if you cancel the agreement and then you buy the home in two days, you know I might still be entitled to that, right? We can put 30 days. After 30 days, you know on the 31st day you can go behind my back and buy the home, right? Now, um, yeah, I, I actually I I mean I've seen people do this, which is crazy, but uh, go behind the person's back, uh, but it doesn't happen often. So that's something right there. Um, and then obviously uh, this is paid through escrow, so it's a, a extra closing cost. If you're unfamiliar with the process, you know um, you have your down payment, you have your closing cost, which is typically two to three percent of the purchase price, and then tagging on another percentage to the to the uh, closing cost. So that's what this paragraph right here is for. That's pretty much it. I mean, everything else is kind of just, you know, standards and legal jargon, but I did want to keep this as short as possible. I'll probably be talking about it a bunch more. So please reach out if you have any questions and I would like to discuss um, signing this with you and interviewing to be your realtor and only your realtor. Um, so reach out if you have any questions, please respond if you want to get this signed and let's go home shopping.